You might need to get a songbook or something, or your mobile. Oh, yes, oh hey, Vaishnava Sakura, do we got a saga? Eda Sekaruna Kori. Oh, hey, Vaishnava Sakura, do we got a saga? Dear Padachaya, Shurahe Amaya, to Chaya Vega Dami, Chaya Dosa Sodi, Chaya Kundi Hudasmi. Chaya Vega Dami, Chaya Satsanga, Deha Heya Mahe, Pose Chesa. Chaya Satsanga, Teo Heya Mare, Rose Chaya Satsanga, Teo Heya Mare, Rose Chaya Satsanga, Rose Chaya Kripa Kori Shada Bindu Diya Deho Krishna Namada Kumi Kripa Kori Shada Bindu Diya Deho Krishna Namada Krishna Seto Mara Krishna Dikte Paro Tomara Shakati Ache Krishna Se Tomara Krishna Dikte Paro Tomara Shakati Ache Amito Kangalo Krishna Krishna Pohu Dai Tava Pache Pache Amito Kangalo Krishna Krishna Bodhi Dai Tava Pache Dai Tava Pache Pache Dai Tava Pache Pache Oh hey, Vaishnava Sakura Do Yara Sagara He Dase Guna Kori Oh hey, I shall have the core of the Lord. I shall Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama.
Shri Narutam Das Thakur Ki Shri Shri Panchatattva Ki Gobu Premanandi Hari Hari Bo Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Hare Krishna So we'll continue our little reading on the Rotam Das Thakur Is that okay? You don't mind? You don't mind if I continue reading this book? Of course, you don't mind. You don't mind? Okay, good. Don't mind. Good. Om Jnana Timurandasya Yananjana Shalakaya Chakshoran Militam Yenam Tasmai Shri Gurvena Shri Chaitana Mano Vistam Tapitam Yena Buddhali Shrayam Rupadamayam Dadati Svapadati Kam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Uttapadakamam Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagajatam Bhagana Lalita Sri Vishakandhitamscha Hirupam Sagajatam Sahagana Vaganatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Padijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Sacha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopeshuka Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhi Vrindavaneshwari Vrishapana Sita Devi Panamami Hari Priye Pancha Kapata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhi Vihevacha Patitanam Bhavanebhya Vaishnavibhya Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Siddhi Gaurabhya Vrindha Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Bhadaya, Krishna Bhishtaya Vitale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Shramaniti Namani Namaste Sanjavati Dhamma Gaurabhani Pachari Naina Vasesha Sanjavati Pastichari Shatani So yesterday we heard that Narottam Das had just left Navarit Of course it was a great you could say, um, experience um, tear-filled separation as he left Navadweep from all the devotees there and many, some of them, quite a lot of them were personally present during Lord Chaitanya's time. So it was a heartbreaking experience in one sense to leave. But now he's proceeding because it's his, you could say, necessary service to move on to Jagannath Puri and we we'll take it up there to Narutam's yeah <clears throat> Narutam's pilgrimage took him through the charming village of Shantipur where he worshipped the feet of Advaita Acharya's son Sri Achutananda after relishing the association of Advaita's many followers, he proceeded to Harinadi. Harinadi was a, maybe it's changed now, but Harinadi was a Brahmin village. And you may have heard about when Haridas Thakur visited Harinadi and he was insulted, in fact, by the local Brahmins. He was preaching the glories of the holy name and they heavily insulted him that uh, you know who are you to speak from the vedas what is this nonsense a low class man is speaking vedic so-called truths they were very aggressive vedas thakur was undisturbed he just preached from shastra and they said things like we have heard that at the end of kali yuga that sudras and persons less than sudras will speak from the vedas now we see it is already happening. They were very offensive. So they just left Harry Hadi. So maybe they've changed by now. Maybe they, they were transformed. But anyway, Jat Naratan visited at Harry Nadi, where he crossed the Ganges and entered the village of Ambika Kalna. 
There he met Shamananda's spiritual master. Well, he was still there, I'm surprised. He would have been very senior by then. He died Chaitanya and was fortunate to receive the darshan of his famous Gorni Thai deities. He was the deities of Goridas Pandit. Huh? Famous deities that Lord Chaitanya had given Goridas Pandit. From there, Naratam went to Kardaha. We was greeted by love, great love and enthusiasm by Sri Vasudha and Sri Janava Mata, Nityananda Prabhu's wives and their son, Sri Bhira Chandra Prabhu. This is where Nityananda Prabhu's family were in Kardaha. Thus traveling from one village to another and meeting many of Mahaprabhu's associates, Narottam remained in a continual state of divine ecstasy. The crowds are pouring in. You may have to readjust, I don't know. You can sit sideways if you like. like. We used to do that, you know, because always... Chair, chair. Yeah, yeah, take more than one chair. Take as many as you like. Sit wherever you wish. But when Prabhupada would give lecture, especially at the manor, he would sit at the back of the temple and we would sit like in rows with a gap between Prabhupada and the altar, slightly angled. Do you understand? We wouldn't sit with our back to the deity. We would sit slightly at an angle in two rows, one, well, many rows, but more ladies one side, men the other. If the ladies can sit over here, and the men sit that side. <laughs> there are no ladies. Okay. Well, we're all by constitution female. But, you know, it's not like... Hmm. Thus traveling from one village to the next, meeting many of Mahaprabhu's associates, Naratam remained in a continual state of divine ecstasy. He cried, shouted, laughed, and even fainted as he listened to the great souls recount their pastimes with the Lord. Can you imagine? Of course, he's an eternal associate also, but just the hearing, like maybe sometimes you also like to hear from those who had close association with Prabhupada about their dealings, their relationships, their experiences, their, and so on. In their relationship with Prabhupada, you become very exhilarated and enthused by hearing it. But can you imagine hearing from those who personally associated with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? This is what was going on here. Just a few years earlier, Lord Chaitanya was personally on the planet and these devotees had personally been with him. And so many of them here we just heard about the Shuddha and Janava Mata and Bira Chandra and Chananda's son. With every anecdote, Naratam's feelings of separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu deepened and he found himself breaking out in spontaneous songs of lamentation and hankering for the Lord's association. Lost in thought of Sri Chaitanya, Narottam then headed towards Jagannath Puri, following the same path which Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself had taken years before. At night he stopped in the same villages the Lord had chosen to rest in. And in each place he discussed Krishna Kata with the local people, just as Mahaprabhu had done. The simple village people were quickly taken by Narottam's magnetic spirituality and handsome features they often tried to convince him to remain with them. Each morning when Narottam swarmed, excuse me, each morning when Narottam prepared to resume his journey, 
crowds of people swarmed around him, following him as he walked. Narottam often found it difficult to disperse these crowds, but eventually with sweet words, he would manage to bid them farewell and continue on his way alone. Didn't have a servant even. In one village, Narottam met an elderly gentleman who had met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The man invited Narottam to sit with him. Come, my boy, he said enthusiastically. Let me tell you about the wonderful things I saw with my own eyes. Eagerly, Narottam took a seat next to this fortunate soul and listened as the old man shared his remembrances. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates came to this village on the way to Jagannath Puri, the man said, I was amazed to see the Lord walked with the gait of a stalking, maddened lion. I could not take my eyes off his beautiful golden form. He appeared oblivious to his surroundings as if the land, water and paths were of no consequence. His devotees, Nityananda, Gadadhar, Mukunda, Govinda, Jagarananda and Brahmananda stayed by his side to protect him from harm. When he sat with the devotees to respect Prashadam, I saw that he ate hardly a morsel. He was so anxious to reach Puri that in the middle of the meal he got up and with a thunderous roar yelled, How far is Jagannath Puri? How far is Jagannath Swami? Seeing the Lord's impatience, Mukunda started to sing, and the Lord began to dance. Narottam's smile broadened when he heard of the Lord's eagerness to reach Jagannath Puri. The man's face beamed as he remembered the sight. The residents of our village then had the rarest treat. The Supreme Lord, the hero of Vaikuntha, dancing before our eyes. As he spun around and around, tears gushed from his eyes like the rushing currents of the Ganga during the monsoon. We were all drenched by them. Narottam suddenly cried out, why could I have not been here to see such a sight? Then bowing at the feet of the man, Narottam murmured, You are the most fortunate person. The old man gently lifted Narottam and continued his narration with barely a pause. Just a few miles down this road, he said, pointing to a nearby path, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and his associates were stopped from proceeding towards Nilachal. A man at the toll gate demanded a tax and he wouldn't let them pass if they didn't pay it. Narutan's face must have registered his incredulity, incredulity that anyone would dare to stop the Lord. For the old man added, but when the tax collector saw the Lord's grave, imposing figure, he was impressed and asked, How many men are with you? The Lord replied, I do not have anyone in this world, and I do not belong to anyone. I am all alone. The entire world is mine. Saying this, the Lord began to shed incessant tears which flowed in streams down his cheeks. The taxman said, O oh master, you may kindly leave, but I will not release the others until I have received full payment. <laughs> they had to pay tax to go on there. Entry tax. What did the Lord do, Narutam asked. The old man's voice shook with emotion. He left the devotees and after traveling a short distance alone, he sat down. He hung his head and tears welled in his eyes. The devotees watched him from the other side of the toll gate. 
desperately worried that they would be separated from their Lord. The taxman watched with them, and even his stone-like heart could not fail to be melted by the Lord's weeping. In wonderment, the taxman said, That sannyasi is certainly no ordinary person. It's impossible for an ordinary human being to shed so many tears. He looked again at the devotees and asked, Tell me clearly, who are you? Whose associates are you? They replied, That sannyasi is our master. You must have heard of him. His name is Sri Krishna Chaitanya. We are his servants. They all then began crying tears of divine love for their Lord. The tax collector was now dumbfounded, overwhelmed by the depth of their mood and purified by their association. He also began to cry. He hastened toward the sitting figure of the Lord and threw himself on the ground like a rod before the Lord's lotus feet. Humbly he said, the great fortune of seeing you is the result of many millions of lifetimes of pious activities. Kindly forgive me for my offenses at your feet. I pray you and your devotees will arrive safely in Nilachal. Lord Chaitanya blessed the tax collector and the party continued on its way. The Rotan touched the old man's feet with great reverence. He thanked him again and again for sharing the wealth of Mahaprabhu's transcendental Leela. Then he too eagerly resumed his journey. Arriving at the Bargi River about six miles north of Jagannath Puri, Narottam took a refreshing bath in the crystal clear water before entering the nearby village. If ever you go to, you remember we went to that spot, the Bahi River? One of those two rivers. Remember, you were with me in Puri this year, this year in Puri? Yes, and then we went from Puri to Bhuvaneshwar. Yes. And as far as I remember, there were two rivers there. And that, we stopped in the Iskon temple there, you remember? Oh, on Dhamma yeah, one of those rivers I believe is named Bargi. I believe so. It may not have been the same spot as this, of course. But it may have been. But um, yeah, Bargi River is a beautiful place. I don't know how far it is from Puri, maybe six to ten miles away. Temple, outside of the temple, city there. Dunga Bunga. Dunga Bunga. Dunga Bunga? Yes. That's the place where Lord Chaitanya, his sannyas staff was broken by Lord Nityananda. And this kind of has a temple in that area. We took bath. You took bath, didn't you, with, in, in the river there? I took bath. You just took water. I went inside, didn't I? I, I swam inside the river there. We took a bath in the river Actually, there. I also. Pardon? I also. You also took. I thought you did. Yeah. It's a wonderful place, beautiful atmosphere. Very off, we say in English, off the beaten track. <laughs> Not many tourists or visitors go there. It's quite sort of, there's a village there. And there's lots of temples around. It's quiet. It hasn't yet been, you know, overwhelmed by the waves of, you know, once they finish I think they're constructing a temple, a new temple and what have you. Surely when it's all finished, it will become like Eka Chakra. Have you been to Eka Chakra, Lord Nityananda's birthplace? Have you been there? Eka Chakra. The first time I went to Eka Chakra, it was so quiet. You could hear a pin drop. Nobody there, just the local villagers. Long time back. There was no electricity there. They had the whole village, no electricity, no roads, no cars, no tourists, no Iskon temple. As soon as Iskon temple started, 
Now it's like, you know, like Mayapur or something like that. You know? It's just like everything. I changed so much, huh? Is it? It's, it's good, but it's also nice to sort of have that experience of the more so, sort of secluded um, environment. Very nice. Mm. Like that, he's here in the Bhagi River, about six miles north of Jagannath Puri. The Rotan took a refreshing bath. Many villager, many villagers gathered around to greet Narotan, understanding to be a follower of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One of the village elders invited Narotan to hear the story of Lord Chaitanya's visit there, eager to know all the details of the Lord's travel. Narotan sat among the villagers and listened attentively as the man described how the Lord of Vaikuntha has showered his merciful glance on these fortunate villagers. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees arrived here, he went to bathe in the river, leaving his sanya staff in the hands of Lord Nichananda. While he was gone, Nichananda Prabhu broke the staff in three parts and threw it into the river. For this reason, we call the Bargi River Danda Bongi Nadi. So this is, that is the place. The place where Sri Chaitanya's staff was broken. At the time, we couldn't understand why Nityananda Prabhu would do such a thing. But later, a devotee of Mahaprabhu explained that Nityananda Prabhu knew that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the Supreme Lord himself. He considered, therefore, his acceptance of sannyas to be useless. That's why he relieved the Lord of the trouble of carrying the staff. Nityananda Prabhu reasoned that the Supreme Lord is automatically a Paramahamsa. He doesn't need to carry a sannyas danda. You know, the sannyas danda is the residence of all the demigods. So from a, you could say from a perspective, a relative perspective maybe, that what is this, the Supreme Lord who is worshipped by all the demigods is carrying them in the form of a danda? They should be carrying him. But here he is. That's another reason. Another reason is that it was an ekadanda. Haripal Saraswati. Take a chair if you wish. Button. Bring a chair. And what is this? Ekadanda. Break it into three. Three danda. Bang, bang, bang. So for various reasons you can see from different perspectives. But the inner perspective, where would you like to sit? Over here is okay? The inner perspective is this one given here, Lord Nityananda. What is this? Lord Chaitanya. He's not a part of the sannyas, or the grihasta, or the vanaprasta. Naham vipro na chanara pati na pi vai shona shudra. Naham vani na chakriya pati yoga na stofitirva. In two projan the kila paramananda punamitam the gopya bhata patakam mantas. He came to give this, share this, open the window to the real, the real heart of the, of the Lord. Prema, love of God. Nothing to do with the orders. When he was talking with Ramananda Roy on the banks of the um, Godavari at Kuvura. Lord Chaitanya was re, um, rejecting all of the wonderful statements of Ramananda Roy about the path of perfection, huh? including even beyond Varnashram, what the speaker of Varnashram, even surrendering to the Lord, rejected. So what is this? Lord Chaitanya is appearing like a sannyasi, a member of the orders of the Varna Ashram, almost a mundane designation is. So he was not happy with this. At least at this moment he wasn't. Narotam offered respects to 
the Bargi, Bargi River, expressed his gratitude to the village elder and continued along his way, eager to reach Jagannath Puri as quickly as possible. Narutam's heart raced as he entered the sacred township of Purushottam Shetra, Jagannath Puri, the abode of the Supreme Person. He shivered with delight to think that this tract of land, spreading over 80 square miles, was the Lord's eternal residence. It had always remained intact, unscathed, even during cosmic annihilations. We may not see that, of course. But it's not a material, not a material abode. It's eternal. Nila Chao. Jagannath Puri Dham. Sometimes we can see manifested whatever we see, but it's eternally present and, and Lord Chaitanya is eternally there. Visible or not visible in an unmanifested form. Just like in Vrindavan. It appears the Lord leaves. It appears when Darwin is no longer visible to mundane eyes, but it's always there. It's sometimes manifest, sometimes unmanifest. And when Lord Krishna left Vrindavan, it appeared to, of course, that's another, you could say another angle, how the residents of Vrindavan felt that the Lord had left, but they were experiencing his presence more intensely than when he was there in the mood of Vipalamba. But actually the Lord never leaves Vrindavan. He, he may hide himself as he hid himself from the Rasalila to intensify the devotees' devotion and their anchoring to be with him. So similarly he performs his pastimes, but he's like hiding, sometimes even in our ordinary dealings, you know, when you're playing with your kids, you hide, right? You hide being in the cupboard or something, they can't find you. It, it increases the rasa, the relationship, doesn't it? You're there, but they can't see you. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? The Rupa and Sanatana, they're running all over Vrindavan. Where are you, Krishna? Where are you? Are you on the banks of the Yuman? Are you in Vamsipa? Where are you? They're calling that. This is the intensity that the bodies we're not at that level. We may be hankering for a thing. Where's the prasadam? Where's the prasadam? Where am I sleeping? Where's my mobile phone? What's the internet number? What's the password? We're very eager for these things, huh? <laughs> We're not like Lord Chaitanya. Where's Jagannath Puri? How far to Jagannath Puri? Where's Lord Jagannath? <laughs> a little bit of that sometimes comes in, huh? Where's the temple? Oh, it's over there. What time's Mangalarti? 4.30. What time's daily greeting? 7.30. 7.30, okay. Um, I'll try to make it for daily greeting. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> we don't have that same vision, that same heart. That's just still mixed up with other things, huh? Narutam's heart raced. Where do we give you that? It had always remained intact. Steeped in profound humility, Narutam regarded everything he saw there, the trees, the birds, the animals, the people, with awe and respect, remembering that all living beings, by the influence of the place, possess four-armed forms. Though these are visible, only to the most highly elevated beings. Even the rickshaw waller who's trying to charge you 300 rupees for going 500 meters. <laughs> you have to be careful. <laughs> there may be some transcendental tax pastime going on here, and we don't know what is it. Narotam offered silent prayers of appreciation for the sacred dham which lies outside the jurisdiction of Yamaraj. In this place, even the simple act of sleeping is equivalent to deep meditation or samadhi. And lying, and lying, 
reposed offers one the same result in, as offering obeisances to the deity. Just lying down. Turning to the wide grand road, Naratan caught sight of the towering red sandstone spire of the ancient temple of Lord Jagannath. Of course, if you've been there, you would know, even if you haven't, you probably know that the Grand Road is a road where the Rathayatra festival proceeds from the Jagannath temple to the temple of Gundicha. Lord Jagannath residing in Sri Shetra in the temple of Jagannath Puri there is like the mood is a little bit like Dwarka or Kurukshetra. So now he wants to return on the request of Radharani to Vrindavan. Gundicha temple is considered to be the abode of Vrindavan. And on the way there are the gardens, the Jagannath Balava gardens. Anyway, there's lots of pastimes related to that, which is like the beginning of Sri Vrindavan Dham. That's the junction, the junction between these dams. But everything is there in Nilachal. Jagannath Puri, all moods of devotion, all the dams. Collapsing to his knees, he stared in wonderment at the massive and red flag waving above the famous eight-spoked Nilachakra, crowning the top of the temple dome. What a glorious sight. Have you, uh, who's been to Jagannath Puri? Who's been? We've, we've, we've seen whatever we see, we've seen. And we see the top of the temple, isn't it amazing? It has, you know, even if you're not very transcendental or very advanced, it's still quite a sight. You know, it has, does something to your heart. You see the, the chakra and the flag on top of the temple there. And it's, it's magnificent, it's, it's captivating. It's not just a nice view, but it's got some... Anyone who sees it feels the Shakti, the power of seeing that. Now they've made it very... When did you last go to Puri? Twelve years ago. When did they do that? They did the renovations around the outside? Around Covid time. Pardon? Around Covid time. Yeah, it wasn't so many years ago, because the last time I went, that wasn't there. Now they've, they've really done a lot of, all around the temple now, it's all pedestrian. It's all lovely pathway, parks, all the buildings around have been painted the same color, pink, you know, around that outside path. And need to, we just go round and round doing kirtan. Hundreds of thousands of pilgrims everywhere. It's all pedestrians. There's no, you know, whatever, rickshaws, there's no cars. There's no stalls, you know, it used to be full of market stalls, you could hardly move. None of that's there anymore. It's just nice trickling around the temple. It's very, it's very nice, huh? For, especially for us who don't see the transcendental aspect of it. You know, it makes it a little easier to feel at home there, you know. You know, fighting your way through beggars and and stalls and dogs and rickshaws and taxis and God knows what, trying to get round there. You know, people pushing and shoving and jostling. It's not like that anymore. And you know, when you do Harinam, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people gather around. You know, it's very wide. I mean, the path's like, you have the path like three or four times wider than this room here, did you say? Probably. The Prickma path like three or four times wider than this room. So you can imagine there's lots of space there. <laughs> and organized with like lines in certain areas where the entrance gates are for people to go in. Not like the old days, it's like a rugby scrum to get in the door or something. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> I guess we can't go in anyway, but anyway, it's okay. Blood pumping with excitement. Narutam got up and rushed along the sandy avenue towards the huge temple complex. He was acutely aware that his feet now tread upon the same sanctified road that for centuries the Lord of the universe 
along with his brother Baladev and sister Subhadra, had traversed during the yearly Rathiatra festival, riding upon their massive chariots, pulled by a multitude of loving devotees. Approaching the main gateway to the temple, Narottam saw two huge statues of crouching lions on either side of the entrance, the Singhadwara, the Lion Gate. To the right stood a stunning form of Lord Jagannath, with a sign next to him stating, Patita Pavana, the savior of the downtrodden and fallen. Narottam fell prostrate before the smiling Lord. So for those who are not Hindus, that's their good fortune. We can take darshan of Patita Bhavana, the deliverer of the fallen and downtrodden. So Lord Chaitanya came to deliver the fallen and downtrodden. So there he is. For those who are Hindus, they do have to put their cigarettes out before they enter the temple, by the way. They don't let cigarette smoking in the temple itself. I'm not sure about fish eating. Maybe fish eating is still allowed, I don't know. But cigarette smoking is not allowed in the temple. So if you go there, make sure you put the cigarettes out. I watched it, you know, I sat outside the Gundicha temple, watching many Hindus putting their cigarettes out before they would go inside. <laughs> with their nice English maid, maybe, maybe not, maybe they make, they make them in India now, but with their nice trousers and nice shirts and ties and, you know, what have you. Their nice Indian traditional Hindu dress. <laughs> and we're set out with a, set outside with a shaved head, tilak and dhoti and <laughs> chanting Hare Krishna. But <laughs> you're not allowed in. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. What a, what a trick. It's obviously Lord Jagannath and they had some, something going on, some special trick going on of the Lord here, intensifying the purity of the devotees' hearts. We don't force. Even Rupa Goswami never went in. We're Rupa Nugas. Sanat and Goswami never went in. They were there for a long time. They never entered the temple. Well, the speaker Haridas Thakur. We never rented him. Even Rupa Goswami, Aracharya, he's our primary Siksha Guru. He never rented him. So we follow in the footsteps where Rupa Nugas, trying to be at least followers of Rupa Nugas. Hmm. Rather than visit the temple, Narottam first sought directions to the house of Gopinath Acharya. Mahaprabhu's beloved associate and brother-in-law of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Arriving at the house, Nirotam called inside to announce his arrival. At once, the elderly Gopinath Acharya leapt up to welcome Nirotam with a warm-hearted embrace. With tender words, that venerable Vaishnav invited Nirotam to sit peacefully by his side. You can tell me this, Jivananda, I can't remember. But we went to, just behind the Iskon temple there, we went to two buildings there. You remember that Pajari there, your friend? Jagadananda Pandit. That's Jagadananda Pandit's house and? Yeah. Srup Damodar's house? Yes. Srup Damodar. Where is the house of Gopinath Acharya? I've forgotten. I can't remember. Is it somewhere near there? I don't remember going there, to be honest. Maybe. Maybe it's not known anymore. I don't know. I can't remember going there. We have to search that one out. This is pretty significant. Gopinath Acharya's house, if it's still there. Or not. Mm. Narutam, everyone here is greatly eager to meet you. But please, first take some rest, and after you can meet the devotees. As Narutamas became, it was very famous, all the Vaishnavas have been told about him. Uh, for a long time he was, of course, in Vrindavan, studying under Jiva Goswami, so news had been spread throughout the entire Vaishnav community about his exalted position as uh, such a great Vaishnava. 
and the elbow also, of course, when he was in Keturi, I mean, news was spread. The words would regularly be going from Navadweep to Puri and back. So news of his coming there had already reached Puri. News of Narottam's arrival spread rapidly, and Gopinath Acharya's house quickly filled up with devotees who had long hoped to meet Narottam. Everyone had questioned, had questions to ask him, and he humbly answered them all, reporting everything about Vrindavan and details of his travels. Sometimes it's like that. It used to be, not so much now. Going to Vrindavan now for members of Hiscon is quite a familiar thing. Pretty much, you don't really, you know, you don't. When someone comes back from Vrindavan, generally, not every, everyone doesn't gather around. What happened? What's it like in Vrindavan? Tell us all about it. Most devotees, you can read about it, you can watch it online, you've heard about it many times. Isn't it? You've probably been there. But in the early 70s, I remember, even like that, when any devotee came to the Bury Place, like in 72, 73, if they'd just come back from India, everyone would gather around. What's it like? You went to Vrindavan? What's, 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 what's it like? You know, we would sit around <laughs> like that. Because <laughs> nobody really had any idea. Nobody had been there in the temple. But then when a devotee, American devotee or something, was on his way back to America, having been with Prabhupada, you know, in, Amer in India or something like that. Everyone was so eager to hear about it, you know. So, like, a little bit like that. Yeah, of course, on a much higher level. Gopinath Acharya arranged for Prashadan to be brought from the temple. And after respecting that succulent Mahapasadam, Kanaya Kuntia took Narottam for Darshan of Lord Jagannath. Passing through the massive doorways of the ancient stone temple, Narottam was overcome with ecstasy and his whole body trembled. He broke ahead of his escort and ran toward Lord Jagannath's main Darshan hall. Catching sight of the massive forms of the Lord glowing before him, Narottam fainted. A knot of people quickly formed around him, both curious and concerned about this handsome young sadhu sprawled on the floor. A few moments later, Narottam opened his eyes. Oblivious to the people gawking at him, he sat up, his gaze falling on the Garuda Stumba. Jumping up, he ran to the Stumba where he stared entranced at the stone column topped by Garuda. This is the very spot. Yeah, Garuda here, there he is. Garuda. Some people don't know. This is an Indonesian, Indonesian carving of Garuda. Indonesia you see many times. In fact, the Indonesian Airlines is called Garuda Airlines. It's a Muslim country, the biggest, um, possibly the biggest Muslim population of any country outside of India, I think. Maybe more than India. There's 250 Mus million Muslims living in Indonesia. 250 million Muslims. Yeah, the airline's called Garuda Airlines. The second airline's called Kartik Airlines. They have another one, what's it called? It's also a, a Sanskrit name. of Vimala Airlines or something, I can't remember it's in the center of the square in Manila, in um, Jakarta, the capital city, is a beautiful deity of Krishna on the chariot with Arjuna, Bhattasarthi, right in the center of the city. It's a Muslim country by religion. But they love, or well, if you could say, they love Krishna in many ways. Their favorite drama, music are all about Krishna and Ram. They do this, what's it called? This puppet. Wayan, Wayan, something like that. They just puppet show. All about everyone, Muslims, everyone, they just adore the pastimes of Ramayam. Muslim country. It Pardon? G, it begins with G, doesn't it? Huh? That place, that temple. Which one? What's the name of that, name of the place, should be? What's the name of that, that 
place where you're speaking about? Uh, Indonesia. A country, a big country. Many islands, 100,000 islands or something, comprise this country called Indonesia. It's not far from Singapore, if you've ever heard of it. Between Singapore and Australia. You don't know where it is. 250 million Muslims live there. But practically speaking, they all have love for Krishna in one form or another. Amazing place. Oh, there are a lot of Hindus living there in Bali. You may have heard of Bali, the famous holiday resort. That's 90% Hindu. Some small parts are Hindu. There's probably about 10 or 20 million Hindus living there. In Indonesia also. Pardon? There are many temples in Bali. Iskon has about 10 temples, I think, on Bali. I think so. Jagannath Temple, Krishna Bharam Temple, Radharasheshri Temple, Gornitai Temple. I haven't been there for a long time. Those were the four when I was there about 25 years ago. I haven't been there since then. There's so many, tens of thousands of Iskon devotees in Indonesia. Tens of thousands. Many of them come from Muslim families also. We have farms and all sorts of things there. Hmm. Garuda. That reminded me of Garuda. Hmm. Naratam ran his fingers over the rough stone, envisioning how Sri Chaitanya had draped his long golden arms around the column as he gazed at Lord Jagannath's exquisite form. Narotam looked down at the column's base, and here is the crater created by the tears that continuously coursed down Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's cheeks as he gazed lovingly at the deities. He was crying so much it eventually formed a crater in the stone. That must have been a lot of tears, <laughs> or very powerful tears, burning tears or something. Narotan touched the groove in the floor and then saw the imprint of Mahaprabhu's hand on the wall. He rested his head against that sacred impression. All this was unfathomable, too much for his mind to comprehend. By now a crowd had formed around Narotan, but he saw none of them. Wrapping his arms around the sacred column, the way Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had done previously. He gazed at the beautiful forms of Sri Jagannath, Baladeva and Subhadra. Tears flow from his eyes in a constant stream, filling the bowl at the bottom of the stumba, just as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's tears had done long ago. Though staring intently at the deities, Narotam could think of nothing but Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. A simple phrase ran through his mind and again and again. I was unable to have the privilege of being with you when you stood here. Had I been born earlier, I could have seen you. Why have you brought me here? Why have I come to see? What have I come to see? Sometimes devotees have this mood also with Prabhupada, you know? Oh, why wasn't I born during Prabhupada's personal time? Why was I, you know, maybe you came to the movement in 1977 and you didn't get initiated by Srila Prabhupada. I don't know if you had that experience or not. But a lot of devotees did. And, uh, you know, sort of a lamentation goes on, you know. Why didn't I get that chance? And the devotees were here when Prabhupada was here. Why didn't I take the, take the opportunity when Prabhupada was here? We also, another type of lamentation, you had some, but you wish you'd taken more opportunity, you know? And you feel lamenting for that. But what does it do? Especially those who didn't personally see Prabhupada in one sense. What did it do? In many ways, you become more attached to Prabhupada than those who were perhaps a little familiar and proud of the fact that they had Prabhupada's association. In many cases, they become even more you could say, attached to Srila Prabhupada, more dedicated to Srila Prabhupada's mission. In many cases, not in all, but in many cases. Sometimes we take it a little bit for granted, a little bit over-familiar, a little bit proud of, you know, I'm a Prabhupada disciple or whatever. 
it's, um, you know, Krishna knows, and he's he sincere. It's like Narottam, is he really missing out? Is he really missing out on Lord Chaitanya's presence or not? It looks like it. In his heart of heart, he's just totally, totally absorbed in Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's presence. Totally. After all, the external presence, what does it do? If it doesn't awaken within our heart, the presence within our heart, then what is it? It's external. Okay, some benefit is there, but it's not the same. The vapu is meant to awaken in the heart the actual vani. The vani is not just external activity. That's essential in order to go along with it. But it's the internal. What is that? That we are totally absorbed in never forgetting Krishna and always remembering him. That's the essence of all vani. To always remember Krishna. The Bhagavad Gita's goal is to always remember Krishna. You hear that verse? How does that verse go? Smarta uh, Vishnu, what's it go? Sat Smartavya Satam Vishnu Vishmartavya Majatu Chit. The purpose of all the Vani is to always remember Krishna. Lord Chaitanya in the heart. Within. All the externals are there to try to evoke that. The pictures. Of course there's more to it than that for transcendental their experience in the personal presence of the Lord, but even daily worship, everything is there the books, everything, the philosophy, to remind us of Krishna. It's the essence of, of sadhana. Where do we get to? All the people who had seen Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, both the local people and Lord Jagannath Pajaris, were overjoyed to see this extraordinary saint who so utterly resembled Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As you know, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally deposited his own prema in Naratam Das. His own mood of separation. His own mood of... of his purpose, Lord Chaitanya's purpose, was twofold. Through the congregational chanting of the Holy Name, to taste the highest form of Krishna Prem. Twofold. So he deposited both of that within the form of Naratam Das. So in one sense, he is the embodiment of Lord Chaitanya's Shakti, no doubt about that. So they could feel that. Hmm. Through Naratam, though, excuse me, though Naratam felt such separation, poor as residents who had been missing the Lord for so long now, felt as if they were again in his company. For them it was as if Mahaprabhu's pastimes were being replayed. Everyone was ecstatic. Narottam did not move from his spot for the entire afternoon, observing all three arty ceremonies. Finally, Kanai Guntia urged Narottam to return to Gopinath Acharya's house. The following morning, Narottam went to the house of Kashi Mishra, where he entered the hallowed Gambira, the small room where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lived during the last years of his manifest presence. The Lord had remained in a constant state of divine love during those years, manifesting the symptoms of ecstasy and separation from Krishna. His state of mind was practically identical to that of Srimati Radharani when Uddhava came to Vrindavan to see the gopis. Narottam entered the room quietly and reverently fell to the ground, offering his obeisance to the sitting place where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had chanted Japa. Placing his head on the asana, he breathed in its fragrance. With profound respect, he touched the bed of Kundali leaves where Mahaprabhu used to lie while Srup Damodar massaged his, feet, his legs. Crying incessantly, he offered respects to each and everything in the room, touching the Lord by touching his divine paraphernalia. Nerotam felt his presence and his feelings of burning separation eased. Overcome with ecstasy, he rolled in the dust of that sacred sight. Walking on to the Toto Gopinath temple, 
Narottam saw a very large enchanting deity with a shining black complexion, seated cross-legged on a throne. Tota Gopinath, he realized, could defeat the pride of Cupid and moved Narottam lay prostrate before him. The temple priest brought a garland and placed it gently around Narottam's neck as Narottam stood. Then he ushered Narottama to Sri Gadarda Pandit's seat when Narottama offered his obeisance and cried, Oh, Gadarda Pandit Goswami Prabhu, how unfortunate am I for not having had the opportunity to see you. Narottam was startled by a heavy sigh when someone asked, Who is crying? Narottam saw a small form in the shadows. Peering closer, he saw a very, very old and very radiant Vaishnav hunched over in a seat. The Pajari whispered to Narottam, It is Mamu Goswami. He is the foremost disciple of a Kreshwara Pandit and an intimate associate of Mahaprabhu. He has been lying in a half-conscious state for months due to separation from the Lord. Turning to the venerable saint, the Pajari said, This is Narottam. He has arrived from Nadia. To Narottam's surprise, Mamu Goswami rose, though the Goswami's body was obviously in a precarious state. He looked exceedingly happy to see Narottama. He embraced Narottama tightly, soaking him with his tears. By the Lord's will, he said, I have now seen you. I heard about you from visiting Vaishnavas, and I yearned to see you. Now my desire has been fulfilled. Taking Rotan's hand, he led him to a secluded place where they sat together. Rotan, he said gently, just look at this beautiful garden. So many blissful pastimes took place here. Right here in this spot, my master, Gadarder Pandit, would sit and read from Sriman Bhagavatam. When he explained the verses, it appeared that many rivers of blissful spiritual love were flowing from his graceful mouth. Everyone yearned to hear him speak, and anyone who heard him even once would never forget the experience. Lord Gorari, the master of Gadarda Pandit's life would sit beside him and listen to his sweet discourses. O oh, Narottama, there is no end to the descriptions of the beautiful pastimes that took place here. Speaking with great love, Sri Mamu Thakur shared many of those confidential pastimes with Narottama. After some time, Mamu Goswami placed his wrinkled hands on Narottam's head, blessing him and dedicating him to the feet of Gopinath. For several days, Narottama wandered in Puri from one sacred site to another. He visited Haridas Thakur's tomb, where Sri Chaitanya had danced holding his dear devotee's dead body. He went to the beach where the Lord had danced to the rhythmic crashing of the waves. He saw where the Lord had run through the sand dunes, making, mistaking them for Govardhan Hill. And he visited the small parks the Lord had mistaken for Vrindavan. One night, Narottam lay awake in Gopinath Acharya's house. Thoughts of the Lord's divine pastimes ran incessantly through his head. He could not sleep. After many hours, he finally drifted off <coughs> into a
vivid revelatory dream. Narottam found himself standing on a large, wide, grand road not far from Lord Jagannath's temple. He was stunned to see coming down the road three magnificent chariots. It was the Rathiatra procession. In front of Lord Jagannath's chariot, Narottam saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, surrounded by his associates dancing in transcendental love. Narottam's eyes drank in the beauty of Mahaprabhu's transcendental form. His beautiful, wide eyes that resembled fully blossomed lotuses. His reddish lips curved in a benevolent smile. His strong neck, broad chest and thin waist. His graceful arms that extended below his knees and his complexion of molten gold which illuminated all directions. His limbs were trembling in ecstasy and rivers of tears flowed from his eyes as he loudly chanted the holy names. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced jubilantly, <coughs> jubilantly among his loving devotees as their melodic sankirtan roared throughout the universe. All the intimate associates who had disappeared from the world years ago were there, dancing along with the Lord, Sri Advaita Charya, Gadarda Pandit, Marari Gupta, Haridas Thakur, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Kolavacha Sridhar, all sang with full heart. Narottam Thakur stood transfixed, trying to take in every aspect of the extraordinary scene. He watched Lord Chaitanya dancing with such love that all the devotees could do nothing but gaze on him or dance with him in utter joy. Huge crowds of pilgrims eagerly pushed forward to catch a glimpse of the Lord's beautiful dancing. Some demigods showered flowers while others disguised themselves as humans to join in the extraordinary festival. Even those who were lame, blind or deaf stumbled eagerly towards the kirtan, determined to join in. Even stone-hearted people wept when they heard the Lord's melodious chanting of the holy names and animals and birds became restless with excitement. As Narottam watched all this from the side of the road, weeping silently, Lord Chaitanya left the kirtan and approached him. The Lord took hold of Narottam's hand and embraced him. Then he said, Narottam, go back to Keturi. It is my desire that you establish a new type of Sankirtan. For your kirtan, you will reveal my teachings, mission, and pastimes to the world. I will empower your kirtan to mesmerize the hearts of all who hear it. Those who are fortunate enough to take shelter of you will receive the most precious wealth of love of God. Now, go back to Bengal and establish the sankirtan of the holy name. Soon you will meet the son of Chiranjeeva Sain, Ramchandra Kaviraj. You too will become the most intimate friends. Together you will establish kirtan and deliver thousands of people from the suffering of material existence. Go and deliver these souls, Narottam. Bring them into the Sampradaya of love of God. I will always be with you and I will protect you. Narottam fell at Lord Chaitanya's feet and bathed them with his tears. Then each of the devotees, including Sri Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Acharya and Sri Vas Thakur, embraced Narottam and encouraged him to fulfill the Lord's mission. Narottam jolted awake, finding himself alone in the quiet of the night. He became perturbed, vacillating between the ecstatic joy of his meeting with the Lord and his associates and the unbearable sorrow of losing their company. He could do nothing but chant the holy name intensely, 
through the remainder of the night. Early the next morning, Narottam went to Lord Jagannath's temple for Arti. Gazing on Lord Jagannath's smiling face, he prayed for permission to leave Sri Shetra and the empowerment to fulfill the mission he had been given. As he offered his sincere prayer, a garland fell from Lord Jagannath's body. The, the mistake, I think. He, he caught it. Although there were hundreds of people in the temple, he brought it directly to Narottam and draped it around his neck. Narottam considered this to be Lord Jagannath's confirmation that he should leave the Keturi. Narottam didn't speak of what had transpired when he returned to Gopinath Acharya's house, but Gopinath Acharya knew, he said. Narottam, the Lord wishes you to return to Keturi to establish Kirtan. Now there could be no doubt that it was time to leave Lord Jagannath's abode. After consulting several local pandits, an auspicious date was fixed for Narottama to begin his journey. The Puri devotees surrounded him on the day of his departure. Gopinath Acharya clasped Narottam's hands. We waited so long to meet you, he said lovingly, and our dreams were finally fulfilled. Deeply moved by all the love the devotees were showering on him, Narottam bade a reluctant farewell, carrying a basket of Jagannath Mahaprasad to share with the people at home. Sri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai, Sri Narottam Das Thakur Ki Jai, Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Hare Krishna. So this will be the next wave of the Sankirtan movement. Narottam Das will now start to spread universally the Sankirtan of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, movement. Hare Krishna. Jai Haribo. Mm -hmm.